so all right so so it's a great film very good <laughs> <laughs> Um, and now I just wanted to ask you a couple questions. Um, there will be some spoiler <coughs> alerts, I guess. Well, yes, yeah, some spoilers, but not that many. Um, the film is titled Mayan Noir, and subtitle is Mosaic uh, Afro Pan. And if you see the whole film, you'll see that the subjects. Um, the speaking subjects, the Afro-French women. Uh, in the description, it's um, seven Afro-French women talking about identity, black identity in France. And we have three terms that aren't really taken up within the film by these um, subjects. So afro -pian. No. So if you could describe what that is um, for everyone, um, and if you wanted to ask them about it, um, because I know that not all the footage was included in the film, obviously. Um, also, Maya Noir, no one really talks about that, but we do hear them speak, we do use the word black or black women, etc. cetera. Um, and so you have afro pan Afro-French, and Maya Noir, mm -hmm. which isn't in the film. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel about putting those labels onto the film and describing the film as such and that difficulty. Um, and then, finally, um, the film starts with uh, the history of, um, well, after the, the opening um, where Bintu talks about, she's a dancer, she's the dancer, she talks about um, her relationship to her body and this visceral, um, violent relationship with her body, um, we see the history of one um, Afro-French Afro Caribbean woman um, talking about Bumi Dum, but we don't hear, throughout the film, we don't really hear a confrontation with slavery, the slavery that occurs in the Caribbean, and how that affects the um, black identity and black identification. Um, and how that's recognized, but uh, I mean, this audience uh, probably haven't heard about this um, scholar, Crystal Fleming, but she works on uh, uh, the denials of slavery in yeah, blackness and slavery in France. It's pretty much decoupled. Um, that's one uh, point of reference we could make briefly, but. Um, if you could speak to any or all of those yeah. points, and then afterwards I'll open it up to the audience. Well, thank you so much for coming, and I just wanted to ask something. I'm still an assistant professor for four months. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you're there. <laughs> getting there. Um, so, I mean, yeah, thank you so much for coming. Um, this was a really interesting process for me, because um, I've always um, made movies. I found the, the first movie that I made as a professor was to explain to my, my brother, who was at the time 13, what I was doing. Because there was no, you know, pulling up a like book about the college, you know, colonialism or post-colonial theory to explain to him what I, what I did. And it worked well with my students, and I've been using film ever since to, um, you know, and we'll talk a little bit about the movie that I made with another one of my students who was 19 years old at the time, Katie Nelson, and we talked a little bit about that yesterday and how, you know, her being 19 and her aesthetic as a millennial also informed, yeah. informed the movie. But um, yes, you, you were talking about label, and when we had the conversation yesterday, someone um, talked about um, this idea of rehabilitating words, like rehabil mm -hmm. the rehabilitation of blackness in America, and I thought that it was very interesting because in France we're not quite at a place where we want to rehabilitate blackness, we're really, we're, we're still at a place where we're looking toward establishing blackness, both as a fact, both as a, like a living experience mm -hmm. and a word. You know, when Mabula says that um, we, we don't say black or white, it's, it's, it's a thing. I mean, if you say, oh, I've seen this person, it's a person blanche, people get shocked. You know, people <laughs> shocked. You don't say noir blanc, it's mm -hmm. true. And when, like, 10 years ago, um, scholars like Mabula started pushing this, you know, there's something, and it's an Afro-French experience, it's a black experience, the experience of black. I mean, and also, what is black? And this is also something that we talked about. If you look at the black community, I don't really like that word in France. It's a, it's a 
crazy mosaic. You have people like Isabel who've been here um, for 400 years. You have people like my parents who came as students in the 60s, 18 year old. You have Senegalese students coming at 19 and going back home after 10 years. You have people coming from the Caribbean. So it's just this insane mix of racial, ethnic, class. So we don't have something called the black community in France, but we have a black experience. And 10 years ago, scholars like Audrey Celestine, Mabula started pushing this thing, and it also coincided with the first big riots. This is something that France always prided itself. You know, for example, telling Great Britain this multicultural thing that you're doing, it's not working. You, you know, you go from one riot to another in the 70s and the 80s, and look at us, everything is perfect, because we have a colorblind, we don't see race, we don't see religion, and everybody's French, and it's working. And we've always had riots, it was just little things. Um, in the 80s and the 90s, and in 2005, we had those three weeks of intense riot where people, you know, I don't know if you remember Fox News saying that, oh, the barbarians are the door of Paris. And then literally okay. people woke up and realized that, wow, we had black people here. And this is really when we start asking these questions. And now when I talk about the, the labels, we're still looking. Um, because, for example, if you look at, I grew up in a black crew but I'm a first, first generation French of Senegalese descent. Mabula is second generation of Ivor, uh, Ivorian descent. Um, Hélène was from Ivory, uh, no, Ivory Coast. We had another person from Martinique um, whose parents have been in France six to se since the 17th centuries. So we were all French because <coughs> we went to French school, but I had a very strong idea about being Senegalese. So I was Senegalese French. So it, and. So people kept a very uh, strong ethnic identity, like Senegalese or uh, Guadeloupean or Ivorian. And with my generation, especially with my sister, little sister's generation, we've seen a very strong shift where this ethnic African identity is being erased. And now we have, you have this like bond, and there's lots of research right now on these like bond de fee. And I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about the film, don't get me started with the movie, you, if you've seen it, Girlhood. Yes. Yes, don't get me started on that one. Um, so there's a lot of studies on these um, group of girls, gangs of whatever they call it, uh, of black girls where you see, I mean, and this is happening, these are our little sisters, within, and it's within the same generation where the ethnic identification to Africanness is disappearing, and we have this type, type of like diasporic, you borrow a lot to America, a little bit to every single, you know, places in Africa or Caribbean mixed with Frenchness and people just call themselves Renoir, Noir. And uh, we had a brief stint where we called ourselves black because when the state discovered that there were black people in America, in, in, in France, the only reference they had to talk about blackness was the U.S. Mm -hmm. So the PC term until today in French media, in French political term to talk about les noirs which is the, the term for black in France, is black. Mm -hmm. Because noir is considered to be a derogatory, derogatory term. Which is weird because, and I always have this conversation with, with people, noir doesn't mean n-word, there's a word in French. There's multiple words in French for n-word. And people can't just utter the word noir. And then this is where we started, you know, um, having this little combat struggle when we're saying, okay, we're going to force people and force ourselves to go from black, because at the time, I mean, when I was 13, 14, it was cool to call yourself black because we didn't have any um, black French figures growing up. Our, the, the figures that we had were either our parents, and we will talk about that. Mm -hmm. There was a situation there. Um, right now in France, in the young black community, there's a lot of Af anti africanness This is something that, we need, that needs to be addressed. Um, and I'll, I'll talk. About, um, I'll make a note to make sure that I'll talk about that. So, growing up in the '90s, um, we tend to shy away from Africanness and embrace blackness because blackness was the cool thing. You know, growing up, we didn't know black doctors or black teachers. The only successful people that we know was Bill Cosby. Bless his heart. <laughs> you know, it was Africa. So the cool thing, the cool thing to be was to be black. This is where. You know, where you could see, you know, cool black people. And our parents, I mean, I had this conversation with Mabula, and this is how I opened my book, where she told me I have this um, vivid memory of loving my mother, because she's from a family of 11, all of them are 
insanely successful with a mom, you know, they really came came from, from the bottom. So she loved her mother for the sacrifice that she did, always loved her. But she told me, and she was, she's always been a straight A student, and she told me, I have this vivid memory of lying to her where, as to when the parents' teacher meeting was, because I didn't want her to come. Mm -hmm. Her clothes always smelled of incense, mm -hmm. always smelled of spice, and I didn't want that. So we grew up, and I mean, and this is something that I also touched yesterday. All of us had extreme, I mean, parents who were behind us, you know, mm -hmm. you will not bring me a bee here, you know. Mm -hmm. So we had a very, sometimes, I mean, I would go to Senegal every month, or every year, other people want, but I grew up with a very strong sense of being Senegalese. But Senegalese, being Senegalese or being African was not a cool thing. Mm -hmm. The state is not showing it as something cool, it's not cool. So even though the family structure is here, as a seven, eight, or a teenager, you don't only you don't, you just don't build yourself with this family structure. You also need a social structure, mm -hmm. especially in a country as France, where the social structure is everything. Everything is built around this this communauté, communauté nationale, mm -hmm. and we don't when you don't see yourself in the communauté nationale uh, or the this this notion. I work a lot with that the, le banal quotidien mm -hmm. um, in my in my work. So like everyday racism? Uh, no, not everyday, but just uh, banalité. Yeah, the banal. Yeah. The banal. Yeah. Um, for example, this is something that I hear a lot. Oh, these women are extraordinary. <laughs> and I say, no, they're not extraordinary. I casted seven of them, but I could have casted 200 of them and just mm -hmm. in my immediate circle. Mm -hmm. They're not extraordinary, they're extra dash ordinary. They're mm -hmm. out of your ordinary. Mm -hmm. They're out of the perception that you have of us. Mm -hmm. And so when you, and, and we, we grew up internalizing this perception. So when you grew up, I, like I told yesterday, I have a student who's actually doing a research on the representation of black, black men and women in um, French cinema. Mm -hmm. Since 1892, 620 movies, there's three movies where the black character plays, doesn't play the thief, the prostitute, or terrorist, and mm -hmm. only one where the color of the person is not part of the plot. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we are in the national eye outside mm -hmm. and it's okay I mean this is it's how it is in Spain in Italy mm -hmm. but in Spain in Italy it's not as bad as it is in France because everything is based on your belonging to the national community this is how the mm -hmm. national idea of the like, French identity is built mm -hmm. so when you're de facto cast I mean what are you so it, it has been a problem for us labeling ourselves you don't want to be African because Af being African is not cool I mean at least growing up and now we see a resurgence of that mm -hmm. Every time I go to Paris, I'm like I'm excited to see you know people growing dreadlocks, the the wax. I mean, so we are re embracing mm -hmm. this this Africanness, you know, with a mix of a little bit of yours. So we we are we are, built, you know, fighting with labels. How to mm -hmm. this and it's what you know, Bula was talking about. How are we going to call ourselves Afro Pian, Afro French, mm -hmm. so Black I'm, Noir? <laughs> I'm wondering if we could take maybe a couple questions from the audience mm -hmm. at this point. Um, just so we can actually yeah. have a conversation going. So just about two, three questions, and then I'll try to make the life much more short. Hi, thank you so much. My name is Amber Henry. I'm a PhD here in Anthropology and Africana Studies. Uh, you talk about these ways that discourses of blackness from the United States are circulating. And, and the way that you've talked about them presents them as happening kind of over there. Mm -hmm. I also know, though, that France has been a huge site of migration for African Americans yes. to Paris mm -hmm. in particular. And I'm wondering how those legacies of celebrating um, African American culture, identities, ideologies from the US have impacted the way that folk mm -hmm. think of themselves in France, so either engagements with those African Americans who relocated to France. Um, I have a colleague right now who's completing her PhD work in sociology on African American expatriates to France, and I'm wondering how these processes of identity formation have been influenced with, with those communities in Paris. So that's uh, so we get two more questions as well, just to have a couple of things to respond to. That's Anyone like that? I'm just wondering whether you could say a bit more about the intersection of religion and race in the French context, because obviously it's such a particular thing about the secularity of the mm -hmm. national identity and how that plays into mm -hmm. 
the, the experience of, yeah. Um, we actually heard Mabula speak a few months ago. Um, Hexagon and Triangle. And, yeah. yeah, she dropped a lot of little seeds that then I'm hoping maybe you can help us scrattle one of them. <laughs> um, I'll tell her. And thinking about it also, she said, you know, she was saying people are growing dreadlocks and, and coming into establishing blackness and you kind of establish a linearity of the, the process of becoming black and mm -hmm. then, you know, how do we treble that blackness that we've then established, but is there a way maybe that blackness can have a different trajectory based on the European or the French experience of blackness that may look different from, them? I borrow some from, but look different from, um, and part of what Mabula suggested also was maybe in France or in Paris specifically, it's not necessary yes. to hold Arab identity and black identity mm -hmm. as two separate things because mm -hmm. they actually function to be racialized in the same space, in the same ways. So maybe that's a kind of an innovation that <coughs> the European context can provide us. So I'm wondering if you can talk about that a little bit. So, ooh. <laughs> American in Paris, we need to go get more food. Yeah. <laughs> no, American in Paris. So, um, I was really stunned when I discovered that France, especially Paris, was a haven for black. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 saying that he relocated yeah. his family to Paris because he didn't want them to experience. It's a long history. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, and something that I discovered when I moved to the US. I was just like, so, okay. So. And I was just telling um, this student I was talking to yesterday, there is two professors in France studying Afro-France. There is more department, there is more uh, scholars, professors, or students, like doctoral students, mm -hmm. researching. I'm not talking about native Indian, I'm talking specifically about the Wampanoag tribe. There is more researchers, French researchers, working on the Wampanoag tribe than researchers working on black French in France. Oh um, we don't talk about slavery, talking, you know, going back to uh, Crystal Fl Fleming's book. Um, growing up, my whole imagination, my whole idea about slavery was cotton fields. Mm. We never, and it was an American thing. Um, there is this amazing gospel, um, musical that just came out. It's called the Gospel sur la Colline. Mm. It's the this, and it has it has been hailed as you know one of the first slavery narrative in France with an amazing cast of black actors who've always, I mean, amazing black actors who've always had to play, you know, thieves and prostitutes. Finally, they had big roles. Mm -hmm. I went to see it and I was floored. Um, these are French actors talking about French slavery and it's set in Louisiana. And if you Google <laughs> the poster, it's cotton fields. Can you tell me, of, of course, cotton, slavery. Well, slavery in the French Caribbean, we, we're, not, we're not growing cotton, we're growing sugar cane. So even our idea of slavery, it's, it's those guys. We don't, there is, you study the Holocaust, for example, for three years in high school. There is two pages and a half in 11th grade on the transatlantic trade. So there's this, so everything is this, you know, I don't want to say hidden, but it's, and you have to, um, like connect the dots. Mm -hmm. So the reason I'm doing this kind of like circonvolution and coming back to the American in Paris, Paris has always, France has always prided his, itself in you know opening its arm to black intellectuals, mm -hmm. whether it's you know the Senghor, mm -hmm. uh, Césaire, and also Richard Rice, etc. Mm -hmm. But it's blackness hurt. Everybody know about Trayvon Martin in France. Everybody mm -hmm. know about every single black boy or man shot in America. Mm -hmm. And when you have a march because Adama Traoré was beaten or uh, Théo was sodomized by a policeman, then you're bringing race into the question. So it's this very weird distanciation of blackness. Mm -hmm. The reason being, we care about black people abroad when they are, you know, whether it's in South Africa or in America when they are brutalized by their, by their country. Mm -hmm. But there's no issue with our blacks here because they're not black, they're French. Mm -hmm. So the racialization really, and this is why Mabula talk about the hexagon and the triangle, it literally, your race, it's like, you know, how when Chernobyl hit, the president came and told us, Be, you, you, you know, you guys are okay because the, um, the fumes will stop at the German border. So your race <laughs> literally stops at the border. Once you step into this mythical oh. hexagon, mm -hmm. your race disappears, and it doesn't. So it's extremely complicated, but we 
the way my generation, you know, whether it's scholars or people who are interested in public life or even artists that I know, engage with that is that we didn't have words to talk about our situation. Like the word race was erased from all um, official documents in France. The word race does not exist. So we didn't, we didn't have words to talk about our situation. And the only scholars, and it, it's also funny talk, talking about how our vision of Africa was very biased, we didn't look at these you know, inter African intellectuals. Alice is talking about you know, discovering about Senghor at 23. Mm -hmm. The only people that we saw terrorizing blackness were African American intellectuals. So we embraced them. Mm -hmm. And the way we, t we talked about ourselves until very recently, and the way we talked about blackness, we talked about constructing blackness, was through the, you know, how blackness was intellectualized and you know, set, set up by African Americans. And this is where now there's like a little sh like schism, separation into this world where we say, OK, there's one thing that is very important. It's the cultural capital, it's language. We need to anchor our blackness in France, and one way where black, where French identity has always been constructed is through language. Mm -hmm. To be French is to speak French. Something mm -hmm. that is not in French does not exist. Mm -hmm. And when someone is calling you, you know, the min the ministry, a very high level official calls you black, you don't exist because black is not a French word. Mm -hmm. So we need to translate. And when I say translate this experience, it's translated within the republican system mm -hmm. that is very different from how segregation worked in the US. So we need to translate this experience. And we also basically need to translate the words. Mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. I gave the example yesterday. We umbrella into this big like blackface um, controversy. Mm -hmm. And nobody's hearing it, because blackface is an American word, you know, Jim Crow. You're importing an American concept. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have internet, Google the Carnaval de Dunkirk, it's blackface. Mm -hmm. But you will need to tell them, okay, it's not blackface, it's called barouillage, and if you go back mm -hmm. in the archives, mm -hmm. you can, this has always existed, then you can, people <coughs> will hear you. Mm -hmm. But if you talk about intersectionality and black, and people just don't hear you because they don't anchor it. Mm -hmm. Even the sound is not familiar to them. I wanted to just ask another question that I another question. Um, so French is not only a language spoken in France and Europe. There's also the Bel uh, the Belgium experience, uh, Switzerland, and et cetera. And sometimes people have family members in these other French phone spaces. I was wondering if um, there are any connections with these other black people in Europe experiencing racism in French, in the French language, and trying to grapple with that outside of, say, a very hexagonal um, Oh, absolutely, Centric. absolutely, and and actually, we have to look at it more. I say, like, a, the building an Afropean identity, and this is where the word Afropean. You know, now you have chapters of Afrofeminist um, movements everywhere. The first Afrofeminist, I don't want to say the first, because the first one really started in 1911. It's also one of those things where we all thought that you know Afrofeminism was Audre Lorde, and then all of a sudden we found that oh man, there was a group of 23 women who created a chapter in 1911 in Paris. So these are things. So now we know that we have their, you know, their books, and we and these were women who did not speak English and who wrote in French. So it goes back to that. But um, yeah, you have Moisy, and Moisy, um, after they did this amazing coup in the summer, it helped three women create Moanamke, which means like woman in um, Bamileke in Brussels. Then after that, chapters started pop up, popping up everywhere. So. There is a lot of circulation, a lot of communication, because Europe is very small. You know, you go from Paris to Geneva, it's like an hour and a half. So people are really trying to create this like sister, like sisterhood across European borders. But I don't think it really has to do with language. You know, like for example, French, Afro-French being closer to Afro-Belgium or Afro-Swiss that they would be to Afro-England. I mean, it, it's more like a European um, like circulation more than anything else. But within this European circulation, we know that, I mean, we, we don't talk about France. We talk, always talk about Republican France because France is so peculiar in the way national identity has been constructed, you know, pushing away race, pushing away religion. You know, we, we in 1789, we say, okay, cutting the, the king's head and Marie Antoinette's head is not going to take away equality because it, the power was not nested within them. The power was nested toward you know, with the, with the church. So this is when this whole, like, mefiance with the church started. And you have to look at this long history to understand the French natural mm -hmm. hatred for religion or anything religious mm -hmm. in the public sphere. Mm -hmm. um, how do you build um, national 
unity. It's not true money, it's not true religion, it's not true waging war, it's true language. And the first thing that they did when they came in Africa was to wipe the most of the uh, local languages, wipe um, religion, because cultural is a capital, culture is a weapon. So if you don't understand those little, and this is where we, it was great for us, going back to your question about America, to use these intellectuals as crutch. I mean, you know, when we were still fi trying to figure out, just put words on this condition and build these like clouds of idea. Mm -hmm. But we have to anchor like this cloud, this pop, this, how you say, um, like ba 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 ba. Um, candy. Like this cotton candy yeah. needs to be firmer because we have to f like anchor it where we are and you cannot anchor it without taking into account the specificity of the construction of, the f of French identity which is extremely different from what happened 10 miles you know, um, east in Switzerland or 10, 30 miles south in, in Spain. Mm -hmm. So we need to, you know, we used to talk about blackness in French but Mabula and I now we say blackness in French. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then um, your question about religion. Um, so your question about religion, and it goes back to the last, um, the last intervention. Um, racialization is racialization, and in in my book, I did a word counts. Um, I work a lot on the banlieue, the periphery, you know, of France's biggest cities. I'm working specifically on specifically on the banlieue, um, on the banlieue of Paris. And I looked at three moments of where the, the banlieue became a big thing. So the first riots, it was not called riots, it was called Trouble, in 1980s around Lyon, the 2005 riots, and the uh, Charlie Hebdo event. Mm -hmm. So looking at six, there was approximately um, 6,000 newspapers, and I had a student create a like program where we, uh, you know, take, took all these news, newspapers in, and, um, isolated the words that are used to talk about the people, the words that are used to talk about the place, and the words that are used to describe the, you know, like the main things happening there. And it was so interesting when you think about people. In 1980s, the journalists will, will say, oh, we are in the Manguette, or we are in uh, Saint-Denis, and we are interviewing these residents, or we're interviewing these retraité, or we're interviewing these inhabitants. Oh, let's look at this guy. He's a like um, worker, or he's um, um, how do you say, a chômeur, an employed. Mm -hmm. So these are the term used to talk about the people. And in 2005, it was delinquent, immigrant, mm -hmm. Muslim, mm -hmm. um, Algerian, <laughs> Algerian, awesome. resident, and resident became was number eight out of the ten first words. Mm -hmm. And in 2015, jihadist, wow. Muslim, Muslim mm -hmm. um, Islamist, birded, veiled. Mm -hmm. So these are the words to talk about the people. Mm -hmm. And you realize that racialization is basically the construction of otherness. Yeah. And otherness is anything that is outside the constructed norm, mm -hmm. whether it's racially or through religion or sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. So you can't, the way it's constructed in France, it's very, especially now that, I mean, I, I was thinking about this other example, this, journal, this journalist was interviewing the minister of budget, and he said, no, we have this, a problem with this, uh, this, this Algerian, oh no, Arab, oh, <laughs> Bonlieuzard. <laughs> so saying Arab Bonlieuzard would have been a slip of the tongue, but he used three words, <laughs> Algerian, <laughs> Arab Bonlieuzard, and he's talking to PPDA, Patrick Pavdao, who is like one of the, you know, the Anderson Cooper of French TV, and <laughs> the journalist didn't even, you know, noted what he said. I mean, you see the conflation between ethnicity, nationality, and it's, so, being other is being other. So it doesn't matter if it's a racial, it, it, Get another? How, how much time? Do we yeah, we can go for another. Okay. Serious? Yeah. So, yeah. Oh. so I, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm tying. Yeah, it, I'm tying it with her, with um, mm -hmm. your, your, her, her uh, question, which is um, the Republic says the first thing that you learn as a French person is that your identity cannot be hyphenated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can. No. And when I'm talking about hyphenated, it, it's with another ethnicity or with f the French is whole. And what we are trying to do and have the state understand is that this hyphenation um, is not something that takes away, it adds to the narrative. 
because and also it's something that I found really interesting is that um, lots of the archives and kind of like schizophrenic, for, for, for yeah. mm -hmm. that a lot of the archives were not destroyed. For example, I give you the example with the blackface, there's this big festival in northern France where you had like thousand people outside literally covering themselves in tar with um, you go to the uh, butchery and get in the, you know like I'll write the name you, you like can, a bone. it's going right now it's mm. going on right now a bone in your nose mm. and a bone in your hair and it's made to like pay homage to blackness what? we never noticed we never said anything and then of course the first time somebody came when in the US 20, 20 years ago and re heard about blackface you came back in France and you're like what okay this is not normal yeah. so and of course what you told is oh it's because you were in the US this American yeah, yeah. they you know they transformed you and so people didn't say anything and then in the last two years like the car and people like Mabula started really being vocal about it and the thing is no I mean you're making a fuss out of anything this is and also um, so it's to history people when journalists went and start looking at it like blackface Jim Crow oh isn't it the name of the segregationist law in America this is an American thing bam mm -hmm. so okay then you have to go you know <laughs> at the BNF the Bibliothèque Nationale check in go on the sixth floor and then ta 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 and of course okay so these are the letters to Madame Mont de Montesquieu 1623 and she's talking to this guy and, and he said okay so this guy da -da -da, this white actor um, he's covered in feather, in tar, in tar, and he is dark as Satan. This is what we want him to be because this is what like people in the Sahara look, looks like. And it's called barbouillage. Bam, so this existed. Oh. And then you go, you know, and things are in the archives. French people are crazy. They will love history, so everything yeah. is kept. Yeah. And the only <laughs> way, so you cannot go in front of you know, a journalist or even a big professor at Sciences Po and say, blackface. Yeah. Yeah. They will tell you, oh, I'm a specialist of 20th century America. It's an American phenomenon. Mm. And you say, okay. <laughs> Madame de Montespan, and then this, and then Yves Montand did this, and then that, and then the last time it, it happened it was in 1984, because you couldn't find an actor to play this role, mm -hmm. Othello, and mm -hmm. you have to find a, black, a white person and cover it, how we, and they'll be like, mm, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. and it goes back to this idea of just adding, and like I say, it's not taking away from this national narrative, it's just covering some of the multiple halls of this Gria, because a Gria needs hall, mm -hmm. but when if it's too, mu too many halls, then the cheese disappears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm really interested in just thinking about the diaspora, but largely about politics. And there's a lot of talk that what's happening politically in France is a, is a response to what's the conservative climate in the US. So the new elections like went the way they did because the U.S. went so conservative and so French was trying to stay were different from the Americans. So I'm wondering what opportunities are there in terms of the subjugation of blacks in this country that maybe the French are trying to respond to um, and say like we're different and we treat black people better and how can black people kind of capitalize on that um, kind of the politics that are happening in the U.S. <coughs> to kind of advance and advocate for themselves in France. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Take a couple. Can I quickly add to that? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I treated it as a joke, but I remember there was oh. a, a, a a widespread sort of public acknowledgement that the French people wanted to nominate Obama. Yeah. 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 I remember that too. Yeah. Deep fascination with Obama. Yeah. yeah. But also, the question I I had a question about.